Hello again, and welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again, and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. As always, I am your couples therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews, joined by the wonderful, effervescent, and eternally youthful Lori (laughs) Watson, your sex therapist. Yeah, flattery will get you everywhere. I feel like that. I like that. We are talking about a sensitive topic today. Yes. Or, I mean, it's sensitive, but more controversial. People fall on a lot of different ways about it. We are talking about porn. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of different ways. We're, we're not going to cover everything about porn today. But we there's well, there's lots of opinions out there about this. About using it. About using it. What about it means. What it means, whether it's useful in relationship or not. Whether it's, a lot of people are we're going to debate whether it's moral or not. All kinds of different things about where pornography um, falls for them, right? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, one thing. I think it's important if your partner is using porn or if you, or if you is to think about why not necessarily what is missing in the relationship but what does it like can we somewhat depersonalize it and think about what it means to them and what porn means to you right because yeah. a lot of times people do not even think about what meaning they give to pornography yeah right because in part it's so accessible and it's it's it is everywhere, and it has permeated our culture in a lot of different ways. It's changed us. It, it really, really it's has changed our sex lives. Yeah, and so especially with the internet over, I mean, what the last thirty, forty years, mm-hmm. it's it's in everybody's hands, literally, right? Um, right. And with through your phones and through your tablets and different things like that. So we just don't, we almost don't stop to actually think about it. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you're talking about can we depersonalize it? Lori, I think that's hard. I think that's really difficult. If my partner is sure, using sure. porn, it it feels like they are taking a lot of times they're taking the the sexual energy that in our relationship and putting it into pornography. Well, right? I, what I mean, okay, so right, and I'm taking a clinical viewpoint on this. Mm-hmm. Like when somebody comes and tells me some sort of sexual fantasy, my first thought is not to judge that as is it a doable fantasy? Can we make that happen in the coupleship? I it's like a dream, right? I want them to analyze what their fantasy means to them. Mm-hmm. And I think that in porn, if we could stop for a minute and people could analyze what does my particular fantasy about f- porn and how I use it, what does it mean to me? Mm. And also as a partner to wonder about your partner's use of porn. Like what does yeah. it mean to them versus feeling absolutely so threatened all the time. I, I know that there is a threat, and it's the same sort of thing, again, in an affair. I mean, and uh, many times, like, we want to say, okay, what did it mean to you? It meant you wanted to hurt me. It's like, wait, wait there's another part yeah. here that they had the affair to mean some, you know, for themselves. Yeah. And I know that's utterly painful, and people don't want to do that, but to to bring us together, to find a more intimate place about dicey subjects we have to examine things on, you know, a level that is curious, not just judgmental. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you about that. I, I think that's absolutely the case. I, I think it's just a hard emotional leap, mm-hmm. right, to be able to do that, to depersonalize it in that way, because that's you're exactly right. Like, that's what I hear from couples all the time. If one partner is using porn and the other partner doesn't know about it and then it's discovered – they feel like they were cheated on, mm-hmm. right? It's it's a very that similar be, yes. feeling. Absolutely, I and, hear that a lot. And so that's one of the things that I think, like, to be able to do that, you have to. Sl- I think you have to slow down as you're talking about to depersonalize it, and those those feelings have to be talked about as well. The hurt, mm-hmm. the hurt that it has the potential, and not a, not every relationship does it cause that much hurt, but it, you have to acknowledge the hurt that the partner that's that maybe is not using porn feels if mm-hmm. their partner is is using in that way. But I like know couples who use porn and and they use it between themselves to enhance erotic feelings, to get started, to I mean there's there are ways that people use porn and erotica and, and stuff that actually, you know, makes sex spicier and draws mm-hmm. them closer to each other. It it doesn't go into this 
compulsive, avoidant way that people can use porn. And, and that's probably my personal objection with it is I see so many people using porn in a way that actually avoids the hassle of negotiating sex, right. avoids sexual intimacy. You know, they're filling their heads with other people mm. and not necessarily seeing, truly seeing their partner and their needs and being in an intimate way. But I mean, sometimes they're at a hotel, they watch porn, they have wild sex. You know, it, it's. Um, so how do you, I don't think that that's a bad thing necessarily. See, I, yeah, I, I have a problem seeing the benefits of it. So tell me about that. Like, what, like, in a health, if you're, you're, if it's healthy, what is the, what does that look like? What is a healthy? Well, I, I realize. I, don't even I mean, that, I, even kinda, as I say this, right? It's like I can't. I'm not. I'm not. Um. I'm not a priestess, or I, I'm not a spiritual right. advisor. So I'm not talking about a moral good or moral bad here. I'm talking about maybe something practical that I I certainly know people who use it and it enhances their erotic life. Um, okay. And, you know, they use it to, to sometimes actually as a fantasy outside of something that they would never want to do hmm. because they're monogamous. And so they can fantasize about others and, you know, the themes of porn that, you know, are so popular – they can fantasize about all of that, but they can then they they're not necessarily dependent on it. They also make love to each other, but sometimes they use this in a way that you know is for spice. Yeah. Okay. And I, I don't I I mean if they're we're not dealing overall with people who come in and say, hey, great, we use porn this way, and you know, and it's great. I mean, we're coming. People, are, people coming are coming to us yeah. who have differences. Who one feels it is a moral wrong, and the other feels like no, it's not. Yeah. You know, or one feels like, you know, oftentimes they're sexually compulsive. You yeah, know? It seems and I think it is. I think as far as I'm concerned, men use porn. And I know that women use porn, too. But I never worry about compulsivity with women. They just uh-huh. don't have the hormones to like to have it hit them. If a woman is sexually compulsive, it's generally with acting out. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily with looking at porn. Yeah. You know, and being preoccupied with porn. It's really being preoccupied with love relationships that are compulsive. You know, so she's using, being used. She's the lady trap. I had yeah. a, you know. See, the, the, I think one of the things that the distinction that you're making there is that is has to do with it's not secret, mm-hmm. right? Like Yes, it's and not the, secret. That, and the, the, the good it's maybe that I can. Thing. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. I think maybe that's the good that I hear in what you're. What you're talking about when couples are using it practically, um, it's not it's not hidden from from one partner. Right. I mean, the whole secret thing is is I think enhances that feeling of they're cheating on me. Yeah. Right. They have something on the side that is more sexually exciting than me. Hmm. I mean, yeah, that's I get that. I get how painful that is. Yeah, because it's something it is something sexual that's happening out when it's hidden. It's something sexual mm-hmm. that's happening outside of the outside relationship. of the coupleship. The coupleship, yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that to me, it's better for there not to be secrets in a relationship, mm-hmm. right? I mean, I think that's that's pretty foundational. Um, and so that ability, if they're both doing it together, has the ability for that to mm-hmm. um, to stir some of those conversations and some of those those things better. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, Lori, we, we differ just a little bit on kind of the benefits of it. And I, I, there's some risk that I see that I want to get your opinion yeah. on yeah. and whether you see them as risk um, as well in using porn in a relationship. So why and don't we take- I mean, I, I can feel like anxiety in me about even coming out on the positive, right? Yeah. Because I know we have so many listeners who feel like it's a moral bad, you yeah. know, that uh, we have a lot of faith listeners and and I in no way want to encourage you uh, to do something sure. that would be against your faith. Yeah. I, I mean, but I can see the other side of it too. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I think and that's one of the reasons to talk about it. So what we were talking about in the when we started about talking about your position on porn mm-hmm. uh with your a partner and it clarifies things for you just like it does with anything. Right. But knowing it, I, ha, I know have a lot of couples that they've just never talked about their position on. They just assumed that their partner would feel the same way that they do about porn. Sure. So being able to have that conversation really important is really important, yeah. and that that gets it that helps to depersonalize it. I think. Yeah, because some people don't care at all. Either that's implicit or explicit. I mean, and yeah. they just they don't care at all. That's, yeah. That's so fine. okay, let's come back and let's, let's talk about um, some more aspects of this important issue. 
Thank you so much to all our Patreon supporters, right? Yeah. Patreon is a platform where you can directly support things that you love. We really want to expand the resources that we can be able to provide right. to you as our listeners. If you know our work touches you and our work helps you, we would be so grateful for your support. Just go to our website, foreplayrst.com, and there you can find a way to support us, and you can see our episodes and our blogs. And thank you so much, guys. Speaking with certified sex therapist Lori Watson from Awakening Center for Couples and Intimacy. Lori, what is an intensive? So an intensive is 12 to 14 hours of therapy all in one weekend. And it's a way to really make fast progress compared to weekly therapy. I mean, there's just so much more you can get done when you have a chunk of time. Overcome the challenges in your relationship and your sex life. Learn more about intensives and Awakening Center's other services at awakenloveandsex.com. At Matthews Counseling, we believe it is our job to come alongside you in whatever difficult challenges of life you are in and help you rediscover hope and to find the strength that you have to face those challenges. We strive to create a safe and comfortable place for you to explore who you want to be and identify the obstacles standing in your way. Oftentimes, the first step toward finding help is the hardest, but it can also be the bravest. Give us a call at 919-587-8018. Find us online at Matthews Counseling. Net. We look forward to working with you. Porn. Let's talk some more. <laughs> oh, I think we have to we have to laugh about it, but I'm also going to laugh at you just looking up and going, porn. porn. <laughs> it is. It's a serious subject, but it yeah. is something that is just. It's so complicated. So we were talking about as we were kind of leaving there the the last part of that first part. I was talking about just some of the risk, and I, and I do, you know, see it as risky in relationship. Um, it, I, I do too, Adam. I, I do too. I it's, mean, it's such a it, just it's distorting in many ways. Well, yeah, I think that's that's one of the biggest ones, right? Yeah, um, is that you have to be you have if you're going to use it, we, even if you're going to use it in the way that you were talking about. Uh-huh. To me, you have to really understand that it is a distorted image of a sexual relationship. Yeah. Right? It is not it is not based in reality. It is completely based in fantasy. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um and so it's like the ever alluring allured partner yeah. like ready for sex at a minute's notice. Yeah. I mean that that's just not true. It's it's without context yeah. overall. It, it, I don't know if you watched Friends, the sitcom Friends, when it aired. Yes. So there's, there's. I'm old enough to have watched Friends. Uh, okay. Well, good. I'm I'll, young enough to have watched Friends. It, it wasn't an accusation, but still, <laughs> <laughs> like, but there's an episode where uh, Joey and Chandler they get free porn on their TV and they're uh-huh. afraid, so they're afraid to switch it off that they'll lose it, <laughs> yeah. so they keep it on, right? And uh-huh. then the the they the girls they order, come over. Well, they order a pizza. They order a pizza, and I think one of them goes. I think we have to turn off the porn. I was just shocked when the pizza girl didn't come in and offer to have sex with me, right? <laughs> like, it is just, it's that kind of... It that, gives you that kind of mentality. Yes, right? yeah, it gives you that right. kind of mentality that all of these things, that you're, that these fantasies are based in reality, uh-huh. um, which just causes pressure and stress in your in your relationship, right? Because nobody can live up to the porn image. And do you think it more more distorts female desire than male desire? Maybe. You know, I think it distorts male's prowess, right? Yeah. That he's always erect, that he's huge. That he goes that, forever. That he goes forever, which women don't like. And, you know, it's like th- that whole thing is a distortion, which I think as a male, you know, just talk about, I, I don't know, that would make me anxious. You know, yeah. and, and I think for women, again, the whole body image thing, oh, my God. I mean, we can go on. I, I agree. It's distorting. But and it, Well, and just to add one more to that. But it's it also distorts, arousing, right? I mean, that, that's... One of the things that it distorts, I think, is that it, um, it, it distorts that sex is everything. And, I mean, you know, I mean, we yes. believe in the importance of sex and relationship. Yes. Right? Um, and its value. But it, it makes sex the number one thing, mm-hmm. right, on the, on the checklist of mm-hmm. what makes a relationship good. And... That that's that's the primary goal in life, and and I think that probably is generationally distorting, mm. because young men are seeing porn, young women are seeing porn, and it becomes this focal point, like that, sex has to be this good, it has to be this crazy all the time, and that's what good sex is versus sex that's meaningful and bonding between two people, 
Yeah. To me, that's what great sex is. Yeah. It's not the gymnastics and, you know, going forever and, you know, just the franticness. That That's not necessarily even good. Yeah. The other thing, the other risk to it that I see is because it is so accessible mm-hmm. right now in the, in the time that we live in. And, and I don't think it's going to be Free. less. I mean, it's no, going no, no. to go back in the box. No, like, it's, it's just never going, going away. It's never going away. Is that I think especially for for men, like it just – it distort it is it distorts our brains first mm-hmm. of all. I mean, there's mm-hmm. some studies yeah, no, that are still being done about true. the the brain effects of it, but essentially, like it creates new pathways in our brains, just like drugs do. Yeah. Um. Right. And, and it can be addicting, similarly to drugs. I mean, they're still studying it's a how addict high. how right. addicting it's going. It is. Right. Um, I, mean, I know that. But and I, yeah, I worry about that. Yeah. So that to me like the you're opening up that chance that there is there there is an addiction that there is mm-hmm. not just an addiction but that it's going to go outside of the relationship mm-hmm. um and so that's where i just question the benefit of it in relationship is the benefit of the practicality of the arousal that it brings is it worth the potential risk and the potential harm mm-hmm. in it and so that's when we're talking about it i think those those things that, that are the things that weigh in my mind I, and i know that you know we have a slight disagreement here but everything you've just said and i do agree with mm-hmm. i and i'm not a therapist and i think this is what's worrisome right a sex therapist who says oh and by the way you should be watching porn no i'd never do that although mm-hmm. i did have a couple recently say you know do you know any good porn films? I'm like, oh, no, now we're in real trouble. You know, you're, you're, <laughs> no, you're, you're, I don't. don't. That's the problem. You don't, you know? want, you don't like, want people emailing you asking for your porn recommendations? <laughs> no, actually, we need to curate <laughs> porn need, or no, something. No. You know? It's like, no. I mean, that that is right problematic, and this is another issue. You know, these people I, – I know that people put up, you know, their own porn now, right, that they're supposedly – um, not being paid for, and it's all real people having, you know, sex. I got to say, it is not real people having sex. It is exhibitionists having sex because mm. real people do not put up pictures of themselves having sex. So there's a difference, yeah. you know. I understand it's different than maybe the porn star with the fake boobs and, you know, and the guy that's hung like a horse. And that's, you know, that some people really like that. But I think... Overall, everybody recognizes that is not real. But I hope they also recognize that the the couple doing it on the kitchen floor is also not real because it's exhibitionism. Well, I, mean, I just I, what I wonder about in that is that it, it again the distortion factor, but it, the expectation of there must be something wrong with me if I don't want to film myself having sex and put it on the internet, <laughs> right? Or that sexual I don't or, want to scare everybody. <laughs> or <laughs> Or that that's what sexual freedom means oh, uh, yeah. and sexu- that sexual oh, yeah. positivity being so that sex positive means that I'm also OK with all of this. I, I think for yeah. myself, I right? think in, in, you know, being in the sex therapy industry, sex positive has come to mean anything goes, mm-hmm. you know, anything goes. And uh, I'm a therapist concerned about love between two people. Yeah. And how sex enhances that and how they can enjoy that and it make it more pleasurable. I am not about sex outside of monogamy, actually. I mean, I treat people who have, you know, lots of different relationships. They're poly or whatever. And I'm not judgmental of them, but they're coming to me with their problems. We, we are there to help them with their problems, not necessarily to uh, endorse their lifestyle, you know, right? Uh, mm-hmm. But, I mean, in terms of my life's work – it's about how do we help couples who are committed? And I, I think that porn, uh, while it reflects couples who are not committed sometimes, mm-hmm. and it, I, I think there is room in our sex lives for fantasy. And sometimes fantasy is visual. Sometimes fantasy is literary. Sometimes fantasy is our own, in our own heads. And I'm not necessarily sure that those differ so much. Yeah. Or that we need to get rid of those. I think fantasy is a way we stay in monogamy and have, you know, kind of we can bring that to make it more exciting. So, I mean, so are you saying if it's a bridge to talk about that fantasy life, if it's a if it's a bridge to kind of to to be open with each other about that? I, I mean, that feels more technical probably than I would say about it. Okay. You know, I I think that people use it. As just as let's watch porn, it's a fantasy. Okay. They're having an experience together 
that is outside of their bedroom, you know, so just what they're doing. And they feel aroused by that and and they have good sex. And I mean, I, I, I just, I yeah. think that that could be enhancing. So it in- increases the arousal between the two of them. Yeah, it does. Which again, to me, is about the relationship. It is. It's about, it's about I, making the relational in-person Live sex I mean, it's better. like it's like being close enough to your partner to say that guy is hot, you know, and you actually are keeping the eroticism about your feelings within the partnership mm-hmm. when you say that to your partner, presuming that you're not threatening him. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not saying that because, you know, he'll be jealous or go crazy. It's like, I, I mean, right. We feel attraction. If we're sexual beings, we feel attraction to others. We we can take that energy and take it captive, if you will, into the relationship. Hmm. I mean, even even people who are morally against porn watch porn. I mean, yeah. I, women maybe who are morally against it don't, but men I know. I I don't know a man anywhere ever who has not seen porn or used porn or is using porn. I just don't, and I, I'm really hesitant to condemn all them as immoral. Yeah, no, I can I can understand that, I, and that's I mean I can only make that decision for myself. Yeah, right. Yeah, whether it's it's moral or or not. Right. Um, what I can, even if I I don't want to condemn them as immoral, but I I want to be wide eyed and clear eyed about the uh, effects the that, and that the it issues. has. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And not to say that, not to to turn a blind eye to them or ignore them. Right. And I you know I have three sons and they're grown men now, but I've encouraged all of them not to use porn because I think it is distorting and I want them to have hot sex lives with real women Mm. you know and I think that sometimes another problem is they compare what they're seeing on screen to what they're having and they they either feel inadequate or they feel their partner's inadequate I mean it it goes on and on Uh, but I think there's probably also a space that you know people can use it to enhance arousal and in a relationship that it isn't threatening in a safe relationship like you know you're not worried that your partner wants to be with that woman or you want to be with that guy or you know i I mean that's what it seemed to it would seem to me that it requires a lot of safety it would that the relationship has to feel really safe to me it has to feel really safe to my partner and we have to be in agreement yeah about that right absolutely that that it's not a threat to either one of us for us to to step forward in the world it's terribly hurtful to the relationship if one is using it, as you said, secretly and knows their partner doesn't want them to or it's discovered. It's like, what? What? Yeah. You use porn? I mean, that's that can be a nightmare. Okay, so basically we, we have to know how our partner feels about it. We have to understand why we're using it. I, I think people need to understand deeply, you know, what they use about it. Is it is it to get aroused because they somehow or another don't have an imagination I mean, one person asked me, can you, the person who said, can you pick out the porn? It's like, no, you know, you (laughs) have to figure out what arouses you. I mean, for crying out loud, it's like, and, and they had repression and inhibition about discovering themes, let alone themes with their partner that even turn them on. Right. I mean, there's a million things that turn people on and to be so blank inside that they don't even know that that's the repression that we're dealing with. I mean, that's why they're asking me for advice about that. That's that, that's a whole other session. We got to do that someday. But, you know, so I, I think overall, you know, my sense is porn is here to stay. We have to cope with this. I'm not endorsing porn as a solution to sexual deadness. I'm saying some people use porn in a way that is between them. It enhances yeah. arousal. I don't think that that's toxic and bad. I do think I have seen. Let me go on record. I've seen porn as toxic and bad in any number of ways yeah. that concern me about this culture, about relationships, about men using porn. I, you know, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah. Absolutely. So talk about it. Talk about it with your partner. Be clear about how you're using it, what you what you mean. Definitely don't hide it. And just go in open eyed about the risk yeah. um, that's that's presenting yourself. So. OK, for Play Radio Sex Therapy, we're out. You can now call in your questions to the 4Play Question voicemail. Dial 833-MY-4PLAY. That's 833, the number 4, PLAY. And we'll use the questions for our mailbag episodes. Hey, help us stay on top here at 4Play. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. All content is for entertainment purposes only and should not be considered as a substitute for therapy by a licensed clinician or as medical advice from a doctor.